Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about the work of the sea and the glaciers and the landforms which have been formed thereafter. Marine or coastal erosion is the breaking of rocks along the coasts and the materials are carried by the sea and the waves. There are mainly three types of marine erosion. The first is corrosive action. So in corrosive action, a very strong wind which blows and raises huge waves dashes against the seashore with a lot of force and this force breaks down the rocks and the cliff is formed. Whenever there are fierce storms, these storms raises the sea waves and these waves hit the coastal regions. The constant pounding of the coastal regions and the rocks by the waves turns the bigger rocks into smaller pebbles and this is called as corrosive action. The second type of action is hydraulic action. In this type of erosion, water which is thrown against a cliff breaks down the rocks into smaller pieces. The waves causes air in the cracks and crevices to become suddenly compressed. Due to the compression, air rushes out suddenly when the pressure is released. And because of this sudden release of air, the cracks of the rocks, they break. The third type of marine erosion is solution. There are some acids which are present in seawater which dissolves away the rocks. It basically has come some kind of chemical reaction with the rocks and then they weaken them. Now let's talk about the landforms which are created by marine erosion. The first type of landform that we are going to talk about are cliffs. Now cliffs are very common landscape which are generally found in a mountainous or hilly region. They are basically facing the sea. It's a huge mass of rock that almost stands vertically. The wave cutting or the hydraulic action is actually the result of the formation of cliff. At the bottom of the cliff there is a very flat surface which is called as wave cut platform. This is along the shoreline. The wave cut platform is also a result of the erosion by the waves. It is normally visible when there is a low tide because the level of the sea water decreases. Now due to a prolonged time period of wave erosion, the weaker rocks which are at the bottom of the cliff may break down further and form a cave. So the headward or the head hanging rock is stronger as compared to the weaker rock at the bottom. This is where a kind of a cave or an inlet is formed. Due to continuous erosion and prolonged erosion, what happens is that there is further erosion of the head of the cave which collapses and when the cave itself collapses only a narrow sea inlet is formed or this is a kind of a passage. This passage is normally used for navigation. For example, like we have the Florida Inlet. When the waves are working from the opposite direction of the cave, it cuts through the caves and this is causing a kind of a bridge which is a natural bridge which is called as a sea arch. Now due to the erosion of limestone, if the rocks are composed of limestone, the air or the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere gets dissolved in it and it enables it to get eroded and due to this erosion what happens is a, a sea cove is formed. A sea cove is a small shelter or a circular shelter. A cove is a small circular shelter. It is a kind of a passageway but this passageway has a certain enclosure. It does not open up completely. Then we have a headland. Due to constant erosion what happens is there is a passageway which is created which is jutting into the sea. This passageway is, a, is an elongated passage which is composed of sand, shells as well as clay. Another important feature of erosion of the waves are called as stacks. 
Stacks are basically huge columns or isolated columns of rocks. These are hard rocks which have not been eroded and they remain as columns. The sea not only erodes away materials, but these materials that they erode also gets deposited along the shore. The tides and the currents they carry away a lot of sand and bits of seashells from one part of the shore to another. These deposits along the coastline creates a lot of formations like beaches, spits and bars. Waves when they rise, they erode away a lot of materials from the shore and they carry this material and also the sand which are the broken pieces of rocks towards the land to form beaches and sandbars. The major difference between a sandbar and a beach is that sandbar are partially submerged under the water. India has got a long coastline of 7500 which has got various beaches as well as there are several prominent beaches around the world. So beaches mostly consist of rocks, pebbles, sand and other loose particles. Depending upon the material which creates or makes the beach, they are divided into various types like rocky beaches, then pebble beaches, boulder beaches, cave beaches, glass beaches, urban beaches, sand beaches, as well as seashell beaches. Glass beaches are composed of naturally weathered pieces of glasses, which are basically broken pieces of colorful stones and pebbles. Such natural glass beaches found in Odisha, Puri beach which is Swark Dwar beach. There is also a glass beach which is present in Russia. It contains broken glass pieces from porcelain factories waste and also unwanted glass from Soviet times. It has got vodka bottles, beer bottles, wine bottles, all that were dumped along the bay in those times. Spits are basically long narrow ridges of sand and pebbles which are formed along the coastline and which is connected to the mainland. One part of it uh, faces the sea and the other part is connected to the mainland. Now let's talk about the types of coastlines. The type of coastline has a lot of influence on the development of the region and the harbours that are created there. Many of the coasts have been formed because of earth movements and they keep on changing because of the action of waves and tides and agents of denudation. Sometimes the sea coast are raised or uplifted pieces of land or they can also be caused by the lowering of sea water. The coastlines are mostly exposed to agents of wind and water erosion as well as waves. The coastline of Africa is very smooth and regular, does not give many harbours because the more indented the coastline is, the more harbours it can create. Similarly, India also has a very long coastline, but the coastline of India is also unbroken and very smooth. That is why there are not very good natural harbours which are found in India as well. Sometimes due to earth movements like earthquakes, what happens is that the sea coast, they sink and a region having a lot of hills and valleys, they also may sink under the sea, due to which the shoreline becomes very irregular and indented and they form various kinds of bays, gulfs, estuaries and straits. So these irregular and indented coastlines form the best harbours in the world. Therefore, Western Europe has some of the best harbours in the world. The first type of coastline are the fjord coastline. Fjord coastlines are U-shaped valleys under the sea and they have got steep poles on either sides. Long time back when the coastal valleys were deepened because of ice or glacial erosion, they went under the sea level, they were invaded by the sea water when the glacial ice melted. This is called as fjord. So therefore fjords are very long and narrow inlets in between mountain on both the sides or with steep sides and they are filled with water. They also form very deep and sheltered harbours. Fjords are mainly coastal regions which are found in the mountainous regions. They were once 
filled with glaciers but now as the ice has melted they are filled with water such type of fjord forts are found in norway iceland greenland canada as well as in new zealand second type of coastline are the ria coast ria coasts are submerged coastal regions they are caused by the drowning of the river mouths when the river empties into the sea ria coast also provides a lot of inlets for harbors then there is the dalmatian coast now there are some mountains and ridges which are opposite and run parallel to the coast when they are submerged and the submerged part of these uh, mountains and these ridges they basically produce very narrow inlets and chains of islands which are formed and these are called as dalmatian coast so dalmatian coast have several islands they even form archipelagos or groups of islands which are submerged under the sea water such examples of dalmatian coast are the arakan coast of the bay of bengal murgwe archipelago as well as that of the adriatic sea which has a lot of archipelagos and submerged portions of the mountains which forms islands and the fourth type of coastline are the half coastline half coastline basically consist of large sandy strips which lies parallel to the coastal regions so instead of having submerged mountains forming islands these are basically islands which are formed of sands and the lagoon which is formed in between is very shallow and thus they form very good harbors such type of coastline are found in the baltic coast of germany good seaports as well as hinterlands form very important centers of human activities there are important cities and large cities which are also located near the sea coast seaports they provide us with harbors along the coast which help us to shelter the ships they are basically very important sites used by ships which are used for trading there are several countries like japan and norway which do not have many land under cultivation so these people they depend upon the sea coast for fishing and there are lots of fishing grounds which are found along the seas in these countries